Here's an obscure piece of Atlas history. Persona games on the go. And no, I'm not talking about the re-releases of the main series on PSP and Vita. Nor am I talking about Persona Q. I am, of course, talking about mobile phone games. I bet you didn't know about those. Most of these borrow assets from the games they're based on, but there's quite a bit of original content to be found here. And we're going to take a cursory look at all of them. Starting with, perhaps, the most well-known. If you can even call any of these well-known. This is Igus, the first mission. As its name suggests, you play as the Android Persona user Igus, spelled slightly differently in Japanese. The first mission is a prequel to the original Persona 3, and takes place on Yakushima Island, which you may remember as the location where you first met Igus. The story begins just as Igus awakens on the island in 99. She's attended to by the Chief of Development, Yu Kimijima, an idealistic young woman who treats Igus as if she were human. She's the one to give her the red ribbon on her breast, so if you ever wondered why she has that thing, it's explained in the phone game, of all places. It couldn't have meant much to her though, since she replaced it with a tie in the arena games. Igus also has a trainer named Sota Aizawa, who is much colder towards her than Kimijima. Fans of Sojima's character designs will be pleased with this game. There's quite a few newly created portraits that appear only in this game. The music, on the other hand, is pretty bad, so I highly doubt Meguro had a hand in it. The gameplay in this looks fun for a phone game. It's an over-the-head shooter with some platforming elements. You shoot at shadows with Igus' guns, and you can summon her persona, Palladian. There are some RPG elements to be found here. Both Igus and Palladian level up. There are a variety of skills you can learn this way. It's necessary to use both guns and persona attacks for different enemies. Igus also has an arsenal of weapons to choose from, such as a spread shot, a grenade launcher, and a drill. That's right, a drill. I think it's used for close quarters combat, if you know what I mean. Oh, I've read too much Persona Hentai. It's unfortunate that this game didn't get a Western release. Oh sure, it doesn't look like much, but it's still a piece of Persona canon. I think. These characters didn't reappear in Arena's story mode, so we can't be too sure. From what I've read, the events in the story are pretty insignificant. It's mainly focused on Kimijima's moral conflict of treating a sentient machine like a weapon. There's also cameos from other Persona 3 characters, such as Eiichiro Takiba and a young Mitsuru. The footage you see here is from a Nico Nico user, who did an entire Let's Play of the game. Now we can at least see what the game looks like, even if we in the West will never get to play it. Visually, it's quite impressive for a 2007 phone game. Out of all the games in this video, this is the one I want to play the most. I hereby award you the title of Big Boss. Staying with the Persona 3 theme, we have Persona 3 Escape. It takes place during the Love Hotel section of the third Full Moon boss. At this point in the story, the main character and Yukari were under the influence of the Full Moon Shadow, and things were getting a little alright. But this game is basically the two trying to escape from that hotel room. You have to look around the room and use your personas and items to solve puzzles. So yeah, it's Persona 3, Zero Escape Edition. We're not done with Persona 3 just yet. Out of all the Persona games, this is the one they milk the most on mobile devices. There was also Persona 3 Social, a game that was exclusive to Mobigay Town, around the time Persona 3 Portable was released in 2010. Mobigay Town is an interesting bit of history on its own, if you'll allow the tangent. It was a Japan-only and mobile-only social network, one of the first of its kind, and was focused mainly around video games. There were a large number of free titles that were available exclusively from the platform. Honestly, if I were to go into detail about the different types of phones and platforms these things were made for, I'd probably be here all day. All you need to know is that this stuff was way before smartphones. Persona 3 Social looks to have been quite similar to the main game in terms of gameplay. You would fight shadows, collect personas, and level up. The main difference seems to be the inclusion of free-to-play cooperative multiplayer. You played as Gekko Kan High students. Kind of generic looking ones, actually. However, before Persona 3 Social, we had Persona Mobile Online, released in 2009. It's an MMO RPG where you had to team up with other players to obtain Arcana points, so it's like a multiplayer version of Social Links, essentially. You would use these points to level up personas and gain access to more at the Velvet Room. You were able to chat and trade with other players. This looks more in line with what you would expect a Persona game to look like, unlike these next ones. Atlas had launched a service for phones called Mega 10 Alpha. Through this, fans were able to get exclusive Mega 10 content, and this included games. 
you can find rare oddities such as Megami Tensei Kicks Persona 3. That's right, it's a Persona themed Kicks game. Okay, I kind of want to play this one. I like Persona 3. I like Kicks. What's not to like? But maybe you're not a fan of Kicks. Maybe you're more of a breakout kind of guy. Well, that's totally fine because Atlas has you covered. Persona 3 Broken Shadow is a Persona themed breakout game. Maybe Bejeweled is more up your alley. Oh, you better know there's a Persona Bejeweled game. It was called Megami Tensei Chaining Soul Persona 3. There was also Persona 3 A Lust Puzzle. It's a nanogram solver. There's nothing more to say, really. There were other games released through this service. Not all of them Persona puzzle games, either. One of them was a Digital Devil Saga game. That was a turn-based RPG. Most of these were developed by Interactive Brains, as opposed to Atlas themselves, but let's move on. This will be the last Persona 3 game, I promise. It's called Persona 3 M, or EM, I'm not entirely sure on that one. It's a side story that takes place during the Yakushima trip of the original game. You're able to socialise with characters during the daytime and go dungeon crawling during the dark hour. The gameplay looks quite similar to the console game. You can see here that all out attacks make an appearance, and the dungeons are extremely low poly versions of its parent game. Next we have Persona 4 The Card Battle. Surprisingly, this was the only Persona 4 game on mobile. Ironic considering how eager Atlas were of milking Persona 4. It was free to play with some microtransactions. Not even Persona is safe. Anyway, it's a card collecting game where you go around challenging Persona 4 characters to card duels. The next game we'll be taking a look at is a side story to the first Persona. It's titled Migami Imbumroku Persona, The Tower of Another Dimension. The English translations you see on screen are sourced from Tom's translations. Uh, different Tom. He's worked on a number of SMT related fan translations, and has attempted to archive many of the old mobile games you see here. These are no longer for sale, and will most certainly become lost in future when the digital stores are taken down. It's thanks to Tom and his efforts that we have any footage of these games at all, let alone with an English translation. Tom is the hero we need, but don't deserve. I highly recommend subscribing to his channel for more translation videos, and follow him on Twitter while you're at it. But let's discuss the Tower of Another Dimension. This side story takes place after the gang were transported by the Davis system. Something went wrong before they could reach their destination, and they're transported through an interdimensional rift. Here, Ego informs you that some of your party members have been lost in a demon infested tower, and that you must climb to the top of this tower in order to return home. You also have to collect 9 orbs from somewhere in the tower, in order to operate the interdimensional transport device at the top. The gameplay is very similar to the game it was based on. You have first person dungeons to traverse and random encounters. Since this came before the PSP version, it retains the original battle theme and menus, although it does allow you to see the grids which indicate your effective range. Something that wasn't in the original game until the PSP version. You eventually run into Kei Nanjo and he rejoins the party. You also meet a little girl named Maria. As a fan of the first Persona game, I really would have loved to play this. It looks pretty cool for a phone game. The final Persona game we'll be taking a look at in this video is a sequel to Persona 2 Innocent Sin, but a prequel to Eternal Punishment. Spoilers for Innocent Sin ahead. You may recall at the end of that game that you and your friends had to erase your memories of ever having met. Well, in this story, something goes wrong. Eikichi remembers the old world right away. This is pretty bad since it's those memories that will ultimately bring about the end of the world. So now you're on a mission to erase them for good. You're told by Todoroki that the world you now find yourself in is actually part of your subconscious, and that you must defeat your shadows in order to fully erase your memories. These shadows are the doubts the characters hold within themselves about forgetting their friendship. The rumour system from the original game returns, and the gameplay is very similar. You're even able to negotiate with demons. You only start out with Tatsuya and Ikichi as party members, but I assume you recruit more as the game progresses. As a side note, there was another game similar to this one, titled Infinity Mask, which took place after Eternal Punishment. Well, that's it for Persona. Before I end this video, let's briefly go over the other Mega Ten games on mobile. There's Soul Hackers Intruder, which Tom has done a lengthy playthrough of on his channel with translations. It's a strategy RPG and is grid based, which is very different from how the original game played. It looks more like a Devil Survivor game than Soul Hackers. Speaking of which, there was also a Devil Survivor card battle game, titled The Extra World, but it has since been shut down. And while we're on the subject of card battle games, there was also a Shin Megami Tensei one, 
called Devil Collection. This one is relatively recent, having been released in 2013. The list just keeps going on. There was a lot of Mega Ten on mobile. It's such a shame that these games are now lost and forgotten, but I hope I've helped give a basic idea of what they were. Until next time, I've been Sniggity Slice. I'll see you around. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video. I'm sure only the most die-hard of Persona fans will find this one interesting. I actually have something important to announce here. This video was an entry in a series I'm going to be starting on the channel, called The Ultimate Persona Compendium. I will be reviewing every entry in the Persona franchise, starting with the very first, Revelations Persona for the original PlayStation. We'll be looking at the initial English release before moving on to the PSP version. You can expect that huge review sometime this year. As for the rest, well, we'll just have to see. It's a big project and I want it to be as detailed as possible. In the meantime, I'll be reviewing other games and maybe covering other topics. So if you came here for the Persona content, which I know a lot of you did since those are my most viewed videos, please stick around, because Persona is something I want to cover in detail. So I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>